you. All right. So the way that I go through, and your my way might not work for you, but a lot of people says, say it does work for them. To determine what's linear and not linear, I run through that list in my head of things that make it not linear. And then I just say, hey, does this fall into that category or not? So somebody please tell me. Um, I'm going to go ahead and tell you that A is not linear. Can somebody please provide me with the reason why? Yes, ma'am. Yep, the variable cannot be in the denominator. That makes it not linear. Now, do not confuse that with letter E. I had some people who thought that letter E couldn't be linear either because it had fractions. We, yeah, we do equations with fractions all the time, guys. We hate them. Remember all those equations we did? They were linear, okay? but you just can't have a, de a uh, variable in the denominator. But all these are just numbers, so that one's linear. A lot of people also think that B cannot be linear, but that's not the case. It can, because you can adjust it by subtracting Y from both sides, and then you'll end up with just a Y and an X. So B is linear. Is C linear or no? Yeah. Why is C linear? What's, what format is it in? Standard. standard form. By definition, standard form is linear. Somebody please tell me why D is not Linear. What's wrong with D, Michelle? Because it says X and Y. And, and X and Y is okay, as long as they're just not in the same... In the same... Uh, I don't know how to say Looking for the word. Yes, ma'am? Like, um, it's not in like, the first like, equation. It has to not like, be in the first like, the equation. Okay, and they're also not in the same term. term. That's the word. You, you were all dancing around it. You guys were all dancing. I was looking for the word term, though. You're right. Okay, my, my other two ladies, though, we were getting there. Can't be together in the same term. Okay, letter F, of course, is not. We all know it's because of that exponent. G is not linear because of the absolute value. I had people that debated H. What? It is. It is. It is. Now, it doesn't, you know, have any kind of a slope to it. The slope is zero. But that's perfectly linear. Okay, questions, comments, concerns about number one? All right. Number two through four. Your test is going to be just like this in that I don't specify the procedure you need to use in order to be able to graph these. I'm going to let you do it how you want. As long as you can graph them correctly, I don't care about your procedure. But it's up to you to make sure that you just get, the, uh, get it on there correctly. I'm going to tell you my personal opinion, what I would do. But you don't have to go for my opinion. It's okay if you don't. Okay, number two, some people would be tempted to graph it using intercepts. And it would be fine if you did because it is in standard form. But those intercepts aren't going to turn out to be whole numbers. Nothing wrong with a number that's not a whole number. If you're good with fractions, that's awesome. Me, personally, that's when I start to make some mistakes. So I don't like to use standard form if it doesn't turn out to be a whole number. Now, number three, I'm definitely going to be using intercepts for that one because my three and six coefficients easily divide into 12. So that one, when I come back to in a minute, I'm going to graph that one using intercepts. Number two... However, I'm going to convert it into slope-intercept form. You don't have to do it my way. That's just what works best for me. So I'm going to write it over here to the side. To get it into slope-intercept form, of course, that 3x needs to come off, which leaves me with a 4y is equal to negative 3x plus 8. And obviously, to get the y completely isolated, I need to divide everything by 4. So that gives me y equals negative 3 fourths x plus 2. So then when I graphed it, I used 2 as my intercept. And then, of course, the slope is negative 3 fourths. So I knew to go down 3 and to the right 4. So down 1, 2, 3, over 1, 2, 3, 4. Just turn it off, please. Oh, it wasn't? Oh, whoever it is, you all, I really don't care. All right. Because I ran out of room, 
And I can't go down three and over four again. Remember that Ballard rubric? We got to have three coordinates. So that means I'm going to have to kind of work backwards from the two. I'm going to go up three and over to the left, four. Still accomplishes the same thing. Going up and over is a negative and a negative, which still gets me going, or is a po still gets me going in that negative direction. Yes, ma'am. So if we already got them right, you just not writing Yeah, so if it's already correct, you don't need to write anything. Yes, ma'am. Okay, don't forget your arrows because technically this function could continue infinitely. I wasn't very picky about arrows on the quizzes. We were just beginners. We're not beginners anymore. I'm going to be picky about things like arrows tomorrow. Don't lose some points for something easy like that. Now, number three, because the three and the six do divide evenly into, or I shouldn't say evenly, but it turns out to be a whole number into 12, that's a good candidate, in my opinion, for graphing by intercepts. So I'm going to first find my x-intercept. I always start with the X for no particular reason. You could have started with the Y. It doesn't matter. And don't do what a lot of you guys did on your quiz and substitute a zero in for X to find the X-intercept. You have to substitute a zero in for Y. So that's going to give me a 3X. 6 times 0 is, is just going to cancel out. So I've got 3x is equal to 12. Divide both sides by 3. x is going to be equal to 4 for my x-intercept. Oh, that was a really crappy equal sign. Then I need to do my y-intercept. I'm doing exactly the same thing. I'm just simply switching out a 0 for the x instead of a 0. Were you getting ready to ask a question, ma'am? All right, so now to do my x intercept, I'm sorry, my y intercept, I'm simply going to switch 0 out for x. So instead of 3 times z x, we're going to do 3 times 0. Well, that's just going to cancel out, really. So then I'm left with 6y is equal to 12. I divide both sides by 6. y is equal to 2. So I've got my x intercept of 4, I've got my y intercept of 2. If you're graphing by intercepts, I will let it be an exception. You don't need to have three coordinates. You can just have the two. For anything else, you need to make sure you have three. But if you're graphing it by intercepts, you can get away with two. All right, number four is in slope intercept form already. So that's what I'm going to use to graph it. So that y-intercept is right there at negative 2. And there's no number in front of the x, which is an understood 1. And because it's a negative, that means my slope is a negative 1. So I'm just going to use that to graph it. So my y-intercept is right here at negative 2. My slope is a negative 1, which just means down 1 over 1. Down 1 over 1. So it's going to look a little something like that. Again, make sure you got those arrows. <coughs> Number five, I've noticed that a lot of you guys like to take your point slope form and convert it into slope intercept and do it that way. That's fine. If that's what it takes for you to graph it and you get it correct, that is no big deal. To me, that's doing too much though. What I would do is, because this is in point slope form, and I know that the formula is y minus y1, x minus x1, I would take the point that is embedded within that equation, and I would just use it to graph. If you want to switch it out and turn it into slope intercept form, though, that's no problem. I couldn't care less as long as you get it correct. But because this is an x plus 3, that tells me that it was originally x minus a negative 3. So I know my x-coordinate is a negative 3. And because this is y minus 4, I know that the y-coordinate is a 4. So I'm just going to graph that negative 3, 4. And then I'm going to take that slope that is given to me in the equation, and I'm going to go up 2 and over 3. I, you know, I'm a pretty intelligent lady. 
Okay, so, well, I'm not really, I'm not really like that smart at this. I've just been doing it for a long time. Okay, now I ran out of space on my graph, so I'm going to have to go down to and over three to kind of get it, my three coordinates that I need. It's just going to be like that. Now, the issue with doing it the way I just did it is that sometimes people, like, forget about the minus and negative stuff, and they screw up the point they pull out. If you're not ready to get there, if you've got to do it in slope-intercept form, it's okay. Um, just for the record, it would have been y equals 2 thirds x plus 6. Yeah. If you did it, if you graphed it in slope-intercept form, that's what you would have gotten, which is fine. Nothing wrong with that. Questions about 4 and 5. A change. We are just doing, we're basically doing eighth grade math is what we're doing right now, guys. Ready to change. Remember that it is your, we'll give you a reminder, delta y over delta x. Same thing as change in y over change in x. Um, you could have done your, your y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Personally, for the table, I would just do it delta y over delta x. First of all, and I, I did goof, guys, and I'm really sorry. I think I forgot to tell your class. That should have been a 1. Which kind of three? Is that what threw you off? I'm so sorry. I'm really so, so sorry. Okay. And if, please forgive me. Yeah, my bad. Okay, so as you can see, it's going down by 2 every time, if, if it was correct. Okay, so that change is a negative 2. And then this side is increasing by... Five every time. A lot of you guys on your quiz put your rise and your run backwards. You guys did five over two instead of two over five. Make sure you do not make that mistake. And don't forget about the fact that's a negative two over five. Number seven, because it was on a grid and the grid clearly each little block represents one, I just drew myself a right triangle. Oh, yes, ma'am. I'm sorry. Okay, number seven again, I just kind of drew myself my imaginary right triangle, and I just counted, which is really all I needed to do for this one, because my scale, each little block represents one. So my rise was two, my run was five. This graph is clearly sloping downwards, so that is a negative two over five. For number eight, this is where our y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 is going to come into play. Remember that it doesn't matter which one you label as your coordinate 1 and your coordinate 2. I always make the one on the left my coordinate 1. I don't have a good reason for it. That's just what I do. So when I go to sub it in, that means that it's going to, according to the way I did it, and again, you should still get the same slope as long as you're consistent and you do it right. So I've got a negative 8, and it's going to be, I'm sorry, negative 9, minus a negative 8, which means that this is going to be plus 8, according to the way I subbed it in. And then I've got a 5 minus a negative 1, which means it's going to be 5 plus 1. So my slope, or my rate of change, is negative 1 over 6. Number nine, a bunch of us, and I do mean a bunch of us, flipped our rise over our run, which to be honest, I don't really get because it even spells out rise in the problem. It did on your quiz too. I'm such a dummy. So, oh, it has nothing to do with dump. We just got to pay attention. Okay, so it flat out tells you the rise was 10 feet. So that means the rise is going to go on top. The 1780 goes on the bottom. Another thing that I was not picky about on the quiz that I will be picky tomorrow. Ballard rubric says reduce fractions. That is not reduced. At least it's an easy one, though. I can just chop off those zeros. So it's 1 over 178. I cannot stress enough how much you guys have to read the directions tomorrow. So many of you missed problems on those quizzes by actually doing more work because you didn't read what format of the equation or you glanced over it or whatever the case might be. Okay, so it says slope-intercept form. There's actually two different ways that come to my mind that would make sense to do it. 
I don't think standard form makes any sense here, like putting it in standard and then converting to slope intercept. That would be a lot of work. Actually, you'd have to get in slope intercept to even get to standard, so that doesn't even make any sense. Okay, there's a slope intercept way and the point slope way would be the two ways I would say you would do it. I'm going to do it both ways. And I personally would just do slope intercept because that's the format the question is specifically asking for. So we've got... Bless you. So I've got my y is a negative 4. So I'm going to sub in negative 4 for y. I've got my m, my slope, is given to me right there to be negative 1 fifth. And I've got my x is a negative 2. So I'm going to sub that in. Because the problem gave us all the pieces we needed for slope intercept. It just didn't tell us what our intercept is. So I took all the pieces given to me in the problem, subbed it in, and now I'm going to solve for b. So that gives me negative 4 still is equal to 1 fifth times 2 is 2 fifths. It's a negative times a negative, so it's going to be a positive, plus b. To get the B fully isolated, I need to subtract two fifths from both sides. Now, this is what really blew up some people in the last period. You've got a negative four, and you're combining it with a negative two fifths. So that's really just a negative four and two fifths. The y-intercept, it doesn't really matter whether it's a fraction or not, um, because slope, we want a rise and a run. For a y-intercept, it doesn't really matter. You can estimate like four and two-fifths. Now, is it better to go ahead and turn it back into the improper fraction? I mean, you could argue, yes, it is, yes, it isn't, I don't know. But now that we've got that missing y-intercept, my equation is y equals, there's my slope, negative one-fifths x, and then there's my negative 22 over 5 that I just found. So that's doing it the slope-intercept way. I've noticed that a lot of you guys are more partial to doing point-slope and then converting it, so that's why I'm going to do it both ways. Either way, there's, there's no reason that one is better than the other. They're all equally fine. So I'm going to do point-slope. So this will be y plus 4 because that coordinate is a negative 4, is equal to negative fifth x plus 2. Remember, I just subbed in y minus negative 4, which is y plus 4. Put my slope on the outside, and then x plus 2, because it's really x minus a negative 2. Then I need to distribute my negative 1 fifth. So that's negative 1 fifths x minus two-fifths, negative one-fifth times two is negative two-fifths. I need to get the four or the y fully isolated, so I'm going to subtract four from both sides. y equals negative one-fifths x minus four and two-fifths, exactly the same answer I just got. Some might argue that that's less work than what I did. Whatever is your preference is fine. One thing that I had a tendency to do a lot Okay, we're going to move on to number 11. This one just says, write the equation of a line. Does it give me a specific format? No. no, it does not. So if you have a question like this tomorrow that does not give you a specific format, then, I mean, you can, as long as it's correct, you can have a lot of different answers. It's really about your preference and what you think is better for you. Now, regardless, you need a slope. Because slope is involved in all of our formats, well, except for standard, but standard wouldn't really work here. Mm -hmm. So for either point slope or slope intercept, we got to have a slope. So that needs to be your first step. Doing your y2 minus your y1 over your x2 minus your x1. You know by now, I tend to do that one as 1 and that one is 2, but it really doesn't matter. You could have chosen it either way. So the way that I've chosen to de designate my coordinates, this is going to become 6 minus 3 if I do my y2 minus my y1. 
and then my x2 minus x1 will be 0 plus 7 because I'm subtracting a negative 7. So my slope is 3 over 7. Now you can agree, disagree about whatever format is best. I'm going to go with the one that takes the least amount of work. The one that's going to take the least amount of work since they give you points, is to put it in point slope form, since they don't specify which way it needs to be. So I'm going to choose a coordinate. I could choose either coordinate. It didn't specify either which coordinate to use. I'm going to use that one for no particular reason, just because that's the one I felt like doing. So I'm going to substitute in to point slope form. So that's going to become y plus 7 is equal to 3 sevenths. Oh, shoot. I just did y minus x. My fault, guys. Somebody stop me. Okay. y minus 3 is equal to 3 sevenths times x plus 7 because I did minus a negative 7. If you chose the other coordinate, it would be y minus 6 is equal to 3 over 7 times x minus 0. Either one of those is right. It's the correct equation in point slope form. If you chose to put it in slope intercept form, I would have stopped right here and just chosen one of them. But if you did go a step further, if you're really partial to slope intercept form, then in that case you would get y equals 3 over 7x plus 6, right? Yeah. Plus 6. So any of these answers would have been accepted as correct because it did not specify what format of the equation you needed. Any of them would have been right. Number 12 asks us, they specifically tell us to put it in standard form. So that means that we do have a, one specific answer that we're going to need to have at the end. So the first thing I would do personally and other people, like, kind of differ in their opinion about this first step. Let me explain to you why you don't have to do it the way I'm doing it right now. But this is what works for me. What can standard form not have? Fractions, for starters. A negative where? In the, the coefficient in front of the x, so the a. Because I know that that fraction is going to have to go eventually... In my mind, it makes sense to get rid of the fraction before I do anything else. Now, it's really easy to make a mistake doing the step I'm getting ready to do. But if you understand how to do it, it really kind of makes sense to get rid of the fraction. So I'm dividing by 5, technically, right? Because there's a 5 in the denominator. Personally, I would go through and I would multiply everything in that equation by 5 to get rid of the 5 in the denominator. That means I need to multiply everything by 5. So I got to distribute the 5 times the y plus 2. And here is where you're going to make a mistake if you're not careful. That's why I'm warning you about it. This is almost identical to the one you're going to see tomorrow. Here is where people are going to go wrong. Now this 5 right here the whole point of using that 5 was to cancel out that 5. So those two 5s are going to cancel each other out. Lots of people are going to do the wrong thing and distribute that 5. I'm putting it in red because it's the wrong thing. They're going to distribute that 5 to the 5x minus 7. Okay, that's not correct because that 7, or I mean, sorry, that 5 is being canceled out with the 5 in the denominator of the fraction. So what you're really going to, I'm sorry, ma'am, what you're really going to distribute is the 2 that is left over. Those 5s are gone. Don't distribute the 5 because it was canceled out by that 5 in the denominator. So what I'm going to distribute is the 2. So 2x minus 14. I like getting rid of the fraction because I'm going to have to do it for standard form anyway. But man, it's really easy to make a mistake in that step right there. So be careful. Now that I've got this a little bit easier to work with, I know that my 2x needs to go over to the other side to be standard form. 
So I'm going to subtract 2x from both sides. So I've got negative 2x plus 5y plus 10 is equal to negative 14. I know a lot of you guys have already subtracted the 10 from both sides in your head. I like to show all my steps, though. So I'm going to subtract 10 from both sides. Negative 2x plus 5y is equal to negative 24. What is Do what, ma'am? Okay, which one doesn't make sense? All right, so let's go backwards. If that didn't make sense, we need to make sure that we figure out why. Okay, so does it make sense that I started off dividing by 5? I wanted to cancel out dividing by 5, right? Because I can't have a fraction in standard form anyway. So I'm going to start off by dividing by 5. Ooh, you know what might be better? Here, let me save the dividing by 5 step for a minute. If that was confusing, let me try some. I still want to do it, but let me save it for a minute. Let me go ahead and do my distributive property first, because we all understand why we do that, right? Okay, so I'm just going to do my y plus 2 and set it equal. So 2 fifths times x is 2 fifths x, and then 2 fifths times negative 7 is negative 14 over 5. Actually, you know what? This might be a better way. Now, I should have thought to do it this way first. I think it'll be less confusing. So we're good with where we got all that distributive, right? Yeah. So now we, we've got two fives we need to cancel out. So yeah, let's do it this way instead. I should have thought about this first. Okay, so I'm going to cancel out those fives by multiplying everything by five. So if I distribute the five over on this side, it becomes 5y plus 10. If I distribute this 5, see, those 5s are all going to cancel. Do we understand why? Okay. Because the 5 in the numerator is going to cancel out both of those 5s in the denominator. So now I've got 2x minus 14. Does that make more sense to do it that way? Okay. It's not the same thing. It's exact. I did exactly the same thing. I just kind of, I did it in a different, I did, I did one of it by doing distributive first. I did the other one by distributing after I canceled. So it's whichever way makes sense. If that way made more sense, and now that I'm thinking about it, that way probably does make more sense to you than what I did the first time. Yes, ma'am? So then once we get negative 2x plus 5y equals negative 24, how do we switch it around to make it right? Okay, I'm going to show you. So go back to, so I did my subtraction. I subtracted 2x from both sides. Oh, oops, don't forget about that 10. And then, of course, I subtracted 10 from both sides. As we're aware, that negative 2 can't stand. It has to become a positive 2x just because of that kind of bogus rule that somebody decided that a can't be negative. So all I need to do is multiply the entire equation by negative 1. <coughs> now, that we got to make sure we multiply everything by negative 1. So if I do that, that's going to become a positive 2x minus 5y is equal to positive 24. Do we see why? Yeah. Just multiply everything by negative 1. It says, based on the graph, come up with the equation of the line in each of those three desired formats. Slope-intercept, you've been doing this since the 8th grade. I'm going to look. See that my y-intercept is a plus 4. So I know my equation is going to be y equals something x plus 4. Then I did my rise over run. I paid attention to the fact that my scale is a little bit different. I can't just count the little bricks. Okay, my rise goes from 4 to 0. So my rise is 4. My run goes from 0 to 2. So that my run is 2. So 4 over 2 simplifies to a 2, and it is sloping down. up or down? down? Down. So it's a negative 2x <clears throat> plus 4. Point slope form, it didn't specify which point you needed to use for point slope form. So you, there's actually a lot of correct answers that I might accept tomorrow, as long as you did it right. The one that's jumping out at me is that when the y-intercept always kind of jumps out at me, 
So that's going to make it y minus 4, because it's y minus your y coordinate, is equal to negative 2, because you know our slope goes on the outside, and then it's going to be x minus 0, because this coordinate was 0, 4. You could have chosen a lot of different points, though. As long as you did your y minus y1 equals x times x minus x1, you should still get the right answer. I've got a, it's going to be harder for me to grade this one tomorrow because there's a lot of correct answers it could be. My personal opinion that for standard, it's going to be easier to take that slope-intercept form and put it into standard because all you really got to do is get that 2x over to the other side. So in my opinion, that's the easiest. So I'm going to add 2x to both sides. It's already in standard. There we go. I've got no fractions. I've got an A that's positive. Yeah, so just to clarify, because I know I kind of have the, the slope intercept on the line, this right there is my standard. That's my answer. Are we good? Yes. Okay. For number 14, it asks to write the slope-intercept form of the equation of the line parallel. If two lines are parallel, what can you tell me about their slopes? They're the same. So we're basically, find, well, we're not basically, we are finding a line that passes through 0, 1. So in other words, think about that, guys. If, we, if we're visual people, 0, 1 is right there. And it has this, it, what is that? That's your y-intercept, right? Yeah. So if we already know the slope, because we know it's negative two-thirds, and we already know the y-intercept because it passes through 0, 1, write it in slope-intercept form. Well, shoot, that's easy. y equals negative two-thirds x plus 1. You didn't even really need to do any work for that one. All you needed to know is that 0, 1 was your y-intercept and that the 2 thirds is the same slope that you need for that one. See what I'm saying? Okay, number... I noticed, I, I just realized these numbers are off. So number 15 is what this really should be, but we'll call it 16. Yes, ma'am. Okay, number 16, slope-intercept form of the equation, parallel, or no, I'm sorry, perpendicular to the x-axis. So for this, those of us that are visual people, here's our x-axis. It passes through the point 2, negative 7. So down there. And if it's perpendicular to the x-axis, that means it has to go straight up and down vertically. For it to be perpendicular to the x-axis, it's got to be like this. So we really kind of just need to know, honestly, that if it's a vertical line that goes straight up and down, it's x equals, and it's x equals whatever the x-coordinate is that it passes through. So in this case, that's x equals 2. Last one. Okay, so they're telling us that it costs $390 to rent the truck and to drive 75 miles. We know it's $5 per mile. Plus whatever that daily fee is. So we have to do the mileage. Oh, I don't know why I just did plus. I'm sorry. That should be times. My fault. 75 miles times five dollars a mile plus the fee added gives you 390 so that is going to give me 375 plus the fee is equal to 390 subtract 375 from both sides that's a pretty cheap fee for renting a truck 15 bucks and that, guys, is your test.